Hello children, from this video, we are going to start chapter number 4, which is fractions, and in this particular video, we are going to cover the lesson number 1 of chapter 4, which is fractions and divisions. We divide things into different parts and represent them in terms of fraction. In this lesson, we will look at how entities are represented in terms of fractions. Now look at the question number 1, which says that when one pizza is divided equally between two children, then each children receives 1 over 2 of the pizza. How? As there is one pizza, so one comes in the numerator and it is divided among two children so two comes in the denominator if it is going to be divided among four children then four comes in the denominator so this is how we decide that what fraction of pizza each children will get and in this case each children receives half of the pizza now look at question number 2, which says Mrs. Ellie divided three identical pies equally into four boxes. Now, there are three identical pies. Three comes in the numerator and they have to be divided equally among four boxes. So four comes into the denominator. Now, we need to know what fraction of pie was there in each box. So automatically 3 fourth or third fourth of pi will come in each box as per the process. In question 3 we have to express each answer as a fraction in its simplest form. Starting with part A we have 1 divided by 7 and here 1 comes in the numerator and 7 comes in the denominator and these both numbers are not further divisible by any single number so this is our final answer. Same is the situation with part B and C in which 3 comes in the numerator and 5 comes in the denominator and for part C 5 comes in the numerator and 9 comes in the denominator and the both are not divisible by any single number so this is the final answer but in part d we have a different case because we have 4 divided by 6 here 4 comes in the numerator and 6 comes in the denominator but these both numbers are divisible by 2 so we further reduce this fraction in its simplest form and represented it as 2 over 3 which is our final answer now in question 4, we have 3 identical cakes and they were divided equally between Sam and Bina. How many cakes did each child receive? As there were 3 identical cakes, the so 3 comes in the numerator and they are divided among Sam and Bina, which means that there are 2 children, so 2 comes in the denominator. Now this is an improper fraction. so. We can further solve it and represent it as a mixed number. In order to solve it, we divide 3 by 2. So 2 comes outside and 3 comes inside. And as we know that 2 into 1 is 2. And if we multiply 2 by 2, then it becomes a bigger number, which is 4. So we will not go there and we multiply 2 by 1. And we have a 1 as a remainder. Now, we are going to represent it in a mixed number. So we have one whole number and we will take remainder as a numerator and 2 as a denominator. So 3 divided by 2 is represented as one whole number, 1 over 2. And as by root, if we multiply 2 by 1, we have 2 and then we add the numerator in it, which is 1, is exactly 3 over 2. So this is the correct answer. We represented the situation in terms of a model as well. 
Here we have three cakes and we have to divide it among two children. So first, we divide two cakes among two children. So it is easily represented by two over two. And then we have divided one cake among two children. So it's represented by one over two. And if we add them up, we still get the same answer, which is three by two, or in terms of mixed number, it is one whole number, one over two. Now in question number five, we have to express each answer as a mixed number in its simplest form. If we look at all these parts, we know that these all are improper fraction because the numerator is greater than the denominator. So starting with part A, we have 5 divided by 2. We are dividing 5 by 2, so 5 goes inside and 2 comes outside. But we know that 5 doesn't come in the table of 2, but the nearest number that is available in the table of 2 is 4, which can come after multiplying 2 by 2. So we have multiplied the number by 2, so 2 comes as a whole number and the remainder, which is 1, comes as a numerator and we were dividing 5 by 2, so 2 comes in the denominator. So 2 whole number 1 over 2 is our answer. In part B, we have to divide 7 by 5. So again, 7 goes inside, 5 goes outside. Again, there is no 7 in the table of 5, but the nearest number that is available in the table of 5 is 5, and it comes by multiplying 5 by 1. So 5 into 1 is 5, and the remainder is 2. So 1 is the number with which we have to multiply 5. So 1 comes as a whole number, and the remainder, which is 2, comes in the numerator and 5 with which we are dividing 7 comes in the denominator and we have one whole number 2 over 5. In part C again we have divided 10 by 4 and the nearest number that comes in the table of 4 is 8. So 4 into 2 is 8 and the remainder is 2. So the answer becomes 2 whole number 2 over 4. And if you wanted to check your answer, you need to do one thing, that is multiply the denominator with the whole number. Like in part C, we have denominator 4. If you multiply the denominator by whole number, which is 2, and then add the numerator in it, so it should come as 10, and the denominator remains as it is. So 10 by 4 is still the same. So our answer is correct. In question number 5, we have to divide 9 by 6. So 6 comes outside, 9 goes inside, and the nearest number that comes in the table of 6 to 9 is 6. So 6 into 1 is 6, and the answer is one whole number, 3 over 6. Again, if we multiply 6, with 1, we have 6 and we add numerator in it which is 3, so still we have 9 over 6 which is the same, so our answer is correct. In part C, we have what is the value of 2 divided by 5 and we have to express this in terms of decimal. So here 2 is dividing by 5 and this is a proper fraction because the numerator is less than the denominator. So first we need to convert it into in terms of uh, tens, hundred or thousand, the nearest one possible. And then by shifting the decimal with respect to the zeros, we will get our answer in terms of decimal. So we have first 2 over 5 and 5 can easily be converted into 10 by multiplying it with 2. So we divide, we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 2. So 2 multiplied by 2 is 4 and 10 multiplied by 
5 multiplied by 2 is 10. So we have 4 over 10 and according to the rule we have 1 0 so we shift the point one time so by shifting it one time we have 0 0.4 this is our answer in question 7 we have to find the value of 3 divided by 4 and express it as a decimal number so first of all 3 comes in the numerator and 4 comes in the denominator. Now we have to convert the denominator in terms of tens, hundred or thousand. So we can easily shift the point in the numerator and convert it into a decimal form. If we look at 4, there is no natural number that can convert it into 10. Because if we uh, multiply it with 2, we have 8 and if we multiply it with 3 we have 12 so we can multiply 4 with these numbers but we can convert 4 into 100 by multiplying it with 25 and remember we always have to multiply the denominator with the natural numbers not with the decimal numbers so uh, we multiply both the numerator and denominator with 25 and if we multiply numerator with 25, we have 75 in the numerator and 100 in the denominator. Now, as per rule, according to the number of zeros in the denominator, we shift the decimal point from right to left in the numerator. Now, if we shift the decimal point from right to left, so it becomes 0 0.75. Because if we shift it one time, it becomes 7.5, but we have two zeros to so shift it one more time, so it becomes 0.75 and represented as 0 0.75. Now in question 8, we have to express 1 divided by 8 as a decimal here. 1 comes in the numerator and 8 comes in the denominator. Now again, we have to convert the denominator in terms of 10, 100 or 1000. It is not possible to convert 8 into 10 or 100 because there is no natural number with which we multiply 8 and get the 10 or 100. But we can multiply 8 by 125 and get the number 1000. These things will come after practice but you have to remember uh, initially that how you get the uh, denominator in terms of ten, hundred, or thousands now if we multiply uh, numerator and denominator by 125 so we have 125 over thousand again we have three zeros in the denominator so we shift decimal point three times in the numerator from right to left and our answer become 0 0.125 now in question 9 we have to express 11 divided by 8 as a decimal again 11 comes in the numerator and 8 goes into the denominator again uh, we have to multiply 8 by 125 in order to get the denominator which is uh, 1000 and then we are going uh, to multiply three, 125 by 3 as well and as a result we get 375 by 1000 and we have to move the decimal point according to the uh, denominator according to the zeros in the denominator which are 3 so our answer is 1 plus 0 0.375 and the resulting answer is 1.375 in question 10 we have to express each part as a decimal so starting with part A, we have 4 divided by 5. 4 comes in the numerator and 5 comes in the denominator. We can easily uh, convert 5 into 10 
by multiplying it with 2 so we multiply both 4 and 5 or you can see the numerator and the denominator by 2 so we have 4 into 2 is equals to 8 in the numerator and 5 into 2 is 10 in the denominator now we have 1 0 in the denominator so we shift our decimal point from right to left one time and our answer become 0 0.8 in part B, we have 7 divided by 8. So 7 comes in the numerator and 8 goes into the denominator. And again, we can only uh, convert 8 into 1000 because there is 125, which is a natural number that can convert 8 into 1000 by multiplying with it. So we multiply both the numerator and denominator by 125. And if we multiply 7 with 125, we have 875 in numerator and 1000 in denominator. Now uh, we will shift our decimal point three times because there are three zeros in the denominator. So by shifting it from right to left, we have 0 0.875. Now in part C, we have 15 divided by 2. So 15 comes in the numerator and 2 comes in the denominator. Again, if we multiply 2 by 5, it is converted into 10 easily and we also multiply 15 by 5 so it becomes 75 and we shift our decimal point only one time because there is only one zero in the denominator so we have 7.5 because the decimal point only shifts one time again in part D we have 9 divided by 4 so 9 comes in the numerator and 4 comes in the denominator and we can convert 4 into 100 by multiplying it with the natural number which is 25 and we also multiply numerator with 25 so we have 225 over 100 and our answer become 2.25 because there are two zeros in the denominator so the decimal point only shifts two times from right to left so if we just one time it become 2.5 and when it become shift second time we have 2.25 so our answer is 2.25 now look at the practice question in which question number says what is the value of the each part express your answer as fraction in part A, we have 7 divided by 9, so 7 comes in the numerator and 9 comes in the denominator and it is represented in fraction in that way. Similarly, for part B, we have 5 divided by 7, so 5 comes in the numerator and 7 goes into the denominator. Now, in question 2, we have to find out the value of each part and express it as a mixed number. In part A, we have 12 divided by 5, and, or, and in order to represent it in terms of a mixed number, we have to divide 12 by 5. So 12 comes inside, and 5 goes outside, and the nearest number, which comes in the table of 5 to 12, is 10. So we multiply 5 by 2, and the answer is 10. And 2 comes as a remainder so our answer is 2 whole number 2 over 5 as per the rule in part B we have 8 divided by 6 again 6 goes outside and 8 comes inside and the nearest number that comes in the table of 6 to 8 is 6 and we multiply 6 by 1 to get 6 so 2 is in the remainder and we can write it as one whole number 2 over 6 and if we want to check our answer if we multiply our denominator with whole number which is 1 which is 6 and if we add up numerator in it which is 8 so 8 by 6 is still the same 
So moving forward to the last question, which is question 3, and we have to find out the value of each part and express it as this one. Starting with part A, we have 1 divided by 5. We can easily convert 5 in terms of 10 by multiplying it by 2. So both the numerator and denominator are going to be multiplied by 2. So we have 2 over 10 and we move decimal point only one time because there is one zero in the denominator so it is 0 0.2 in part b we have 6 divided by 8 and from our previous questions we know that 8 can be converted into 1000 by multiplying it by 125 so we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 125 and get 750 over 1000 and we have three zeros in the denominator so we shift the decimal point three times and we have 0 0.75 as an answer it becomes 0 0.750 but we can I uh, can't write the last zero we can only write it as 0 0.75 in part C we have uh, 13 divided by 4 so 13 comes in the numerator and 4 comes in the denominator and 4 can be converted in 200 by multiplying it with the natural number which is 25 so we multiply both the numerator and denominator with 25 we have 325 by 100 and we move the decimal point two times so our answer become 3.25 in part d we have 15 divided by 8 so again we are going to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 125 and we have 1875 by 1000 and by moving our decimal point three times from right to left, we have 1.875 as an answer. So this is the end of the lesson one. Do follow and subscribe my channel. Thank you for watching.